to reach across. <clears throat> Mr. Gray, are you ready to take the oath of office and assume your duties as the mayor of the District of Columbia? I am. Well, please repeat after me, I, Vincent C. Gray, I, Vincent C. Gray, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will faithfully execute, that I will faithfully execute, the laws of the United States of America, the laws of the United States of America, and of the District of Columbia, and of the District of Columbia, and will, to the best of my ability, and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend, preserve, protect and defend the Constitution of the United States the Constitution of the United States and I will faithfully discharge and I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office the duties of the office of mayor of the District of Columbia of mayor of the District of Columbia which I am about to enter which I'm about to enter so help me God so help me God congratulations First of all, I want to thank uh, Bruce Johnson for such a nice introduction, not only of me, but for everybody who's <clears throat> preceded me at this uh, podium. I want to thank Chief Judge Eric Washington also for administering the oath. He is, a, he is an outstanding jurist. He, of course, is the Chief Judge of our Court of Appeals in the District of Columbia, but he also is a man who is deeply committed to the growth and development of the District of Columbia. Chief Judge Washington, Eric, thank you very much. <laughs> to the uh, Council of the District of Columbia, I want to congratulate uh, those members who have been uh, re-elected. I'm proud to have been a part uh, of the Council of the District of Columbia and everybody who stood for re-election, in fact, was re-elected to the Council which is a great testament to the great work that has been done by this body over the last several years. <clears throat> Thank you, council members. I want to extend my congratulations to my colleague and my dear friend, uh, Kwame Brown. Kwame Brown and I, Kwame Brown and I, came on to the Council of the District of Columbia six years ago. We live in the same neighborhood. We are a part of the Hillcrest Civic, uh, Citizen Civic Association. We are friends. And Kwame, I look forward to working with you together over the next four years. I also want to thank the uh, leaders who have come from other areas to be with us today, to be a part uh, of this uh, ceremony, to the many diplomats who have taken the time uh, to be here, to my family who you saw up here, especially my children and their children, and to my one remaining aunt, and trust me, I had lots of aunts and uncles, uh, to my one remaining aunt, Aunt Florence, 
Lawrence Patterson, who is here today, to my, to my mother-in-law and my father-in-law, who have been just like parents to me uh, over all these years, to my brother-in-law and his family, and to all of our family who has come today, thank you all very much for being here to be a part of this. To uh, my fellow residents of the District of Columbia, especially the seniors who worked so hard during this campaign to help make this possible. I stand before you today humbled by the oath that I've taken, the trust that you have placed in me, and the challenges and opportunities that we face ahead. I stand here proud to be a native Washingtonian. I am proud to be a product of this city's public schools, the public schools of the District of Columbia. And yes, I listened very carefully to my dear brother and friend, Harry Thomas Jr., when he talked about the fact that there are three Wilson High School graduates on this council, and that is true. And I remember the day he said to me, we have three Wilson graduates. You're always talking about Dunbar High School. What do you think of that? And my answer was, obviously, Tommy, my dear friend, it takes three Wilsons to equal one Dunbar. I'm also proud to be a graduate of George Washington University. I am proud to have been the first African American in a fraternity at George Washington University and proud, proud to have been joined today all these years later by more than 20 of the brothers of Ta Epsilon Phi, all of us having been bonded of us having been bonded by what truly was then and remains a profound human experience. I also stand here proud to have been able to serve people with disabilities and the children, youth, and families of this city. I'm proud to have enjoyed the support of the people of Ward 7 as their council member for two years and then the people across this city were kind enough to elect me to be the chairman of the Council of the District of Columbia for the past four years. And yes, I am proud just a few weeks ago to have been elected to be the next mayor of the District of Columbia. Thank you, District of Columbia. And on behalf of the people of our city, I want to thank our outgoing mayor, Adrian Fenty, who has been a devoted and dedicated public servant in the District of Columbia. Please join me in thanking Mayor Fenty. Thank him again for his service and for what I know will be future public service in the District of Columbia because he too is a native Washingtonian. Thank you, Adrian. Since the inception of Home Rule, five people before me have raised their hands and taken the sacred oath. Each has left a unique mark on the office. They served in times of prosperity as our city flourished and they served in times of challenge and hardship. But all have benefited mightily from the strength and optimism of the people of the District of Columbia. We live in one of the most unique and recognizable cities on earth. Across the world, people here, Washington, D.C., 
and they conjure images of majesty and history. They think of the home of our president, the seat of our national government, a command center in the global struggle for freedom and democracy. While we take pride in these images and honor the special relationship we share with the federal government, to us, the people of the District of Columbia, this city means something quite different. To us, quite frankly, it is home. It is, it is where we work, raise our families, build communities, practice our faith, teach our children, and yes, every day live our lives. And while there are some who choose to focus on the racial or economic differences in the city, make no mistake, there is far more that brings us together than there is that drives us apart. Whether, whether we live in Northeast, Northwest, North, Southeast, or Southwest, whether we are black, white, red, brown, or yellow, whether we get around by car, bus, train, foot, or bike, this is one city, our city, the District of Columbia.